uh, Congressman Price, thank you for being here this morning. Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Murray, thank you for the opportunity to participate. Um, as you and I discussed, uh, Congressman, um, we share uh, a concern for patients. Um, uh, my husband and I have two kids, and our adult son uh, at times has had up to 10 doctors and a couple of dozen medications. So the Hassan family knows the strengths and the weaknesses of our health care system uh, very, very well. And as uh, governor, I was pleased to work with members of both parties uh, to build on the example that Senator Young talked about in Indiana to have a bipartisan New Hampshire-specific Medicaid expansion plan that's providing coverage now to over 50,000 hardworking Granite Staters. Um, and so um, I've seen uh, the advantages of the Affordable Care Act and the flexibility that the Affordable Care Act gives states uh, right up uh, close and, and worked with a Republican legislature uh, to, to pass it. So um, it's that context that I bring to a seri this series of questions. Um, first of all, as we talked about, opioid overdose deaths have been on the rise for several years and have hit New Hampshire particularly hard. Uh, we have about the second highest rate of drug overdose deaths in the country. Um, under the Medicaid expansion program that I just talked about made possible only by the Affordable Care Act. Um, thousands of New Hampshire citizens are getting the opportunity to get treatment for substance use disorder. And I talked with one of them last week, a woman named Ashley, who had had an addiction uh, for almost a decade. Uh, Medicaid expansion gets passed under the Affordable Care Act. Uh, she got treatment, um, and she is now in recovery. And after a year on Medicaid, which, by the way, we've done it in a particular way so that it's actually strengthened our insurance market in New Hampshire because more insurers came in as a result of the way we did Medicaid expansion. Anyway, she's now working, and she's just switched over to private insurance because she's got employee, uh, employer uh, provided insurance. So you have proposed repealing Medicaid expansion in the budget that you propose. So yes or no? Can you guarantee that you will make sure that Americans with substance use disorders who've gotten insurance through Medicaid expansion, just like Ashley did, will not lose their health insurance? I, I, I think that I joined our conversation as well and the, and the subjects that we delved into. I think that it's absolutely imperative that we as a nation make certain that every single individual have access to the kind of mental health and the kind of substance abuse challenges that they have. Well, so is that a guarantee that you that you will find funds to actually provide the treatment? It's a guarantee that I'm committed to making certain that we address that need, which is so vital and important across this land. So I'm just concerned that you're not going to be able to back up that guarantee if the Affordable Care Act is repealed. And I'm concerned about the impact that will have on states and people like Ashley who need the coverage. Um, I also just want to talk about uh, whether you agree uh, that people with health insurance should have some very basic essential coverages, like checkups at the doctor's office. Do you think health insurance coverage should provide for that? I think that, that, that uh, as we mentioned, with choices for patients to be able to select the kind of coverage that they want instead of somebody else decides for them, it's so very important that we remember that at the center of all of these discussions is a patient. And the patient knows best what he or she needs. And that's the imperative that I would but, bring to you, that, that I'm committed to making certain that patients have the choices available. And if they choose to select that kind of coverage, then, then they ought to, that but, ought to be But if insurance companies don't offer it at all, like substance use disorder. So an essential benefit under the Affordable Care Act now, it requires private insurers to cover substance use misuse treatment. They didn't used to do that. They also have stopped covering a lot of things until the law requires them to. So yes or no, um, the Empowering Patients First Act repeal, would repeal the requirements that insurance companies cover substance use disorders. So do you think that's still a good thing? Uh, I, I think that what's a good thing, again, is to keep the patient at the center of all of this and make certain that we're providing the kind of options and choices for patients so that they can address their clinical but, and medical but needs. But see, here's the thing. If insurance companies never offer it, they don't have the option. They can pay good premium dollars, but it's just not offered. And the Affordable Care Act said to the insurance industry, here's some basic things you've got to offer so that when a patient needs care, the coverage is there and they can get the care. 
And your answer and the Empowering Patient Act would take that assurance away. It's not an option if insurance doesn't cover it. Yeah, the, 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 the good news for you is that, that as an administrator, if I'm privileged to serve in that capacity, that I follow the, the, the policies that are adopted by the Congress of the United States and signed by the President. And so we look forward to working with you to make certain that those, th those kinds of things are covered and those patients receive and, the care and, that they and, need. And with respect, um, there's been lots of opportunity to make certain that those things happen. And until the Affordable Care Act was passed, it never happened. And people didn't get the care they needed. And because of that, a lot of people like the Ashleys of the world uh, weren't getting better, weren't getting treatment. Providers don't exist to treat people if they can't figure out how they're going to get reimbursed. The most important thing that our treatment community said in New Hampshire was Medicaid expansion of the Affordable Care Act made it possible for them to stand up a higher volume of treatment. So I look forward to working with you too, but I'm concerned about your uh, unwillingness to commit uh, to making sure that insurance companies cover these essential benefits. I am almost out of time and we haven't even touched on the issue of women's health, um, which um, is obviously of great concern. Um, so let me just ask a couple of questions. Yes or no, do you think an employer should be able to fire a woman because she uses birth control? Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't believe so. Well, you voted in support of a resolution to disapprove the District of Columbia's non-discrimination law, the Reproductive Health Non-Discrimination Act, which protects women here in D.C. from being fired or penalized because of their reproductive health decisions. So your vote would have had the effect of allowing employers to fire a woman for using birth control or for other decisions she makes about her own body and reproductive health. So how is that vote consistent with the answer you just gave me? Well, I, I, again, I think that, that it's, uh, it, it's, I think the question was about who's paying for, for that product. No, the, not... the question is whether an employer who, let's say, in a self-insured employer-provided health insurance plan finds out that a female employee who earned the benefit with her hard work is using the benefit to provide health, uh, to provide birth control, to buy birth control, which the benefit provides, and then fires her because the employer disapproves of the use of birth control. I, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. You don't think that? Ha would I you like us to provide examples for you? I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. So you would be willing to say that employers may not you would support a law, a rule, uh, that employers may not uh, discriminate against women for their reproductive health decisions. I, I, I don't think that employers ought to, uh, that, that employers have the, uh, the, 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 the opportunity right now to be able to let somebody go based upon their health status or, or, or the so then medications why, that they use. So why did you vote against the D.C. provision that I don't think made that's clear. what it did. You don't think that that was your vote? I don't, I don't think that's what the bill did. Thank you. We'll follow up on that. Thank and again, you. I wish I had more time uh, because I have about eight more questions. I'll submit them in.